size of Irma can cause extensive damage on the land with massive storm surges, excessive rainfall and waging winds. During its life cycle, even an average sized hurricane can expend as much energy as 10,000 nuclear bombs. So it's no surprise that they can cause extreme amounts of damage. Hurricane Katrina for example in 2005 caused around 110 billion dollars in damage. In other example, it took Puerto Rico 11 months to restore its power after Hurricane Maria in which 1.5 million people lost electricity. And we're familiar with these things. But what exactly happens below the ocean surface in the deep sea when these storms pass through? Man-made objects stationed underwater can be blasted by these hurricane-driven currents. A hurricane churns the surface of ocean like a powerful washing machine. But how does a hurricane affect fish? Well, the answer depends on whether the fish are far out at the sea or closer to the shore. The chaos starts at the ocean surface. The hurricane's winds blow up against the water, creating waves. As these waves grow taller, they develop more area for winds to press against, which in turn makes waves even larger. When a storm churns across the ocean, the warm surface waters provide additional vapors which fuel the storm into a hurricane. As these hurricanes grow larger and stronger, it can generate waves as high as 20 meters, tossing and mixing warmer surface waters with cooler and saltier water below. The resulting currents can extend as far as hundreds of meters below the surface, wreaking a deadly havoc on marine life. The upper levels of ocean are typically stratified by temperature and salinity, which means cooler and saltier water lies below and the warmer and fresher water is near the surface. But when a hurricane comes by, it mixes everything up, resulting in a muddled and more homogeneous upper layer. That means the surface water is now cooler and saltier than before. However, in very shallow coastal areas, the enormous amounts of fresh rainwater from the hurricane can actually reduce the temperature and salinity of near surface water. Okay, now that we know how it all starts, let's see how it affects the marine life. Hurricanes can be devastating for fish. But the damage imposed depends upon the type of fish and its location. Hurricanes can affect marine life through multiple mechanisms. Let's look at them one by one. During a hurricane, fast swimming fish such as sharks usually escape the harm as they can detect small pressure changes in the water, prompting them to swim deeper or farther away. But slower swimming fish or territorial fish such as crabs, sea turtles, oysters typically fare poorly during hurricanes as they get smashed around by the waves before they can escape. It has also been observed that sometimes sharks, dolphins get pushed around by the strong waters of hurricane into shallow lagoons or even drainage channels where they need to be rescued and released back into the ocean. Also, a hurricane brings in heavy rain and fresh water. This fresh water is less dense than salty water, so it floats on the seawater like salad oil on the vinegar. This density difference prevents the oxygen from mixing into the salty bottom layer, so the bottom dwelling fish might feel stressed. Also, huge amounts of mud steered by the storm can kill the fish by clogging their gills. Many animals like penguins who need air to breathe are also killed as they fail to reach the surface in time. Also, relocating of shipwreck, breaking of oil pipelines can prove fatal for fish. When Hurricane Andrew hit, the government estimated that more than 9 million fish were killed offshore. Similarly, a study estimates that Hurricane Katrina killed about 180 million fish. Hurricanes are mixed back for corals. Coral reefs can protect coastlines from storm by absorbing its energy. They are a sort of first layer of defense for the coastal areas. When the storm is small, it is rather beneficial for coral reefs, as the water currents break coral into smaller fragments which are then spread out, which in turn grow into new corals. But when the storm turns into a hurricane, the harms outweigh the benefits. Hurricanes can rip apart the corals and dump huge amounts of ocean sediment on them, which kills the coral as the broken corals are more susceptible to disease and death. If these wild currents fail to break the corals directly, the rain-infused water they bring in reduces the salt levels and stresses the corals. As the hurricane moves towards the shore, the underwater tumult can cause shifting sands and muddy waters, blocking the essential sunlight which coral and other sea creatures rely on, which is again a death sentence for them. Typically, coral reefs ravaged by the hurricanes recover in 15 to 20 years, but in recent years, these reefs haven't been bouncing back. A lot of these corals have lost their resilience due to human factors, either local factors like overfishing which reduces the fish that graze on the reef and keep it free of algae, 
or we are now seeing increasing sea temperatures which are increasing both direct deaths from bleaching and coral diseases. But for some species, the results can be beneficial as the damage to the fishing boats bring in more food for the fish like dolphins and sharks that manage to survive, which might help them grow in number. So in a nutshell, hurricanes are bad news for marine life, but the amount of impact depends upon the type and location of the fish. And for coral reefs, it depends upon the strength of the storm. But the path to recovery is nonetheless a long one. Okay, that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.